Okay, folks, so it's time for uh, C++. So um, in, this, in this last video that I did, um, I did uh, Fortran. And so I'm going to try to have Fortran pulled up and then uh, basically um, see if I can show you some of the differences between the two since they are both um, compilable languages, which means you both have to compile them. Um, but they do have a, a couple different things. So I'm going to make an NRCPP. Um, a lot of the things I'm going to do here are actually just C standard. Um, C and C++ are very similar. Um, there's a lot of things that C++ has that C doesn't. I'm not going to get into what the differences are, but I just write everything in C++. That way, if I ever go on a forum and find something that's only C++, I can still do it. Um, okay, so again, you want to do the uh, hello world thing. So... Uh, we're going to do int main, um, uh, let's see, c out Newton Raphson using, and let me not use c out. Uh, well, I'll do it two different ways. Yeah, it's Newton Raphson using C, and then uh, I can do endl, which means end line, and you can actually do printf um, Newton Raphson using C, and then slash n. And the slash n is a, a new line. Um, this is, even though I'm going to, um, uh, let's just go through what I did last time. So if I try to run nr.cpp, permission denied, I augment the privileges. Uh, let's see, nr.cpp, and then run it. Uh, it says syntax error because it doesn't have the environment. So I got to compile it. So with Fortran, I use gfortran. Um, on Linux, I use uh, G++, so G++ nr.cpp, and then I get a bunch of compile errors. So first, C out was not declared in the scope, and L was not declared, printf was not declared. Um, so the thing is, is just like Python, you need to um, import some modules. And so the, uh, the, in, the first module we're going to import is the standard library. So honestly, you would think that this would just be like always in here, but it's not. Um, so it uh, looks like it doesn't need any of that. The, the, the other thing that we need to do is do uh, using uh, name, oops, suing, using name space standard. And so that will hopefully, nope, didn't get rid of anything. So standard library, okay, I guess I don't really know what standard library is for. Um, I guess we need uh, pound include IO stream. And then printf wasn't included, so I think we need the uh, C standard. Pound include C standard IO dot eight, or just IO uh, library. Boom. Okay, so there's the libraries we need. I wonder, did we? I mean, do we need the standard lib? I guess not. Oh yeah, it compiled it into a dot out, didn't it? There you go. Okay, so we don't need the standard lib yet. So I guess just for this code, you just need the uh, IO stream. And then the C standard I/O. So I think I/O stream is C out, and then C standard I/O is printf. Um, same way to uh, print print to home screen. Okay, so once we've done that, we want to get the input arguments. So in order to get input arguments in C++, this main routine actually has some input arguments called argc and car star star um, argv. Now this is uh, getting a little weird. All right, so argc here is the number of input arguments and then car star arg v is a double pointer to a string and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do for int idx equals zero idx is less than arg c um, idx plus plus I'm going to make a for loop here and I'm going to I'm just going to use c out I actually kind of like c out better um, arg v of idx and l um, and so here we go. So I'm going to compile that. And so I'm going to do, um, let's see, a dot out. So it looks like uh, Python and C++ do the same similar thing where the first argument is um, the name of the function. And so if I do a dot out 10, I get a dot out and 10. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and just comment this out. And so slash slash is a comment. And I'm going to say if arg c is greater than one um, this means I have the uh, this means 
uh, arg v of zero is the function name, and arg v one is x zero. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say double, and I think I need to declare it out here. So the cool thing, so in Fortran, you had to declare all the variables at the top of the function. Um, in C++, you can just declare it anywhere. Um, I like to declare them outside of if statements because I feel like they give me um, trouble, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm just going to be safe. So I'm going to say x0 equals arg v of 1. And I, I know what you're thinking. Um, this is probably going to give us an error, and it will, but I'm just going to put it in just because. So and then I'm going to say initial guess is x0 and l. And by the way, these 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 bit shift operators, they're there just to delineate different fields. So this is saying like, hey, see out, write initial guess, write x0, and make a new line. Um, and then obviously else, uh, I'm going to see out and say um, no input arguments, uh, dude. And then... Um, and, uh, and then I'm going to uh, break out of the program. So remember we had like stop, abort, pause, all these different uh, ways to exit out in, uh, in C++ it's uh, return zero. And the reason why is because if you notice this function, so this function is called main, it returns an integer. So int, so in uh, Fortran it's integer, it's spelled out integer, but in C++ it's just int. Um, so let's see if that works there, um, oops. Uh, let's compile the code. Oh man. So what did it say? Let's see. Line 20. So line 20 is here. Line 20. This is line 20. It says cannot convert car star. So remember that arg v is a double pointer. So arg 1 is a single pointer, car star, to a double. And so that means x is a double. So what I need to do is I need to say a to f, which is essentially the um, converting a string to a float. And there we go. Oh, A to F was not declared. Okay, there we go. That is included in the standard library, guaranteed. And it compiles. Okay, so first I do A dot out with no input arguments. It says Newton wraps in twice. No input arguments, dude. I do it again with a 10. Initial guess was 10. All right, so we've got the initial conditions of our uh, Newton Rapson. Uh, so all of this here does, all of this essentially does all of this in Fortran. Um, right initial guess. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to create my uh, vector of um, iterations. And again, I'm going to pre-allocate here. Instead of uh, dynamically allocate, I do not want to get into uh, pre-allocating. Um, I'm going to make an int called a counter, which is zero. I am going to call the function f. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, double error equals f of x zero. So I need to actually make the function f. So those all go down here or up to, or I don't think it matters where they go, but you just, you want them somewhere. So this function is gonna return a double. It's going to accept a double and it's going to return um, x minus one times x minus one. I think you can use the power function, p-o-w x minus one comma two. We'll see if that compiles, oops. Uh, let's see, power was not declared. Oh, you need the math, the uh, pound include math.h. Booyah. Okay, so cool. So uh, let's do a C out uh, error. Let's do initial error. And initial error equals um, error and L. Compile that. A dot out, 10. Yeah, there we go. Initial error is 81. So, okay, cool. So we got it. Uh, moving along, so um, again, uh, C++ doesn't have any built-in plotting. Actually, nothing in C++ honestly is built-in, uh, but you can do anything. Um, I mean, like, massive programs are written in C++. I mean, huge ones. I have an entire CubeSat simulation written in C++ uh, with joystick inputs. Um, just, like, pretty much everything is, uh, is in here. So, um, anyway, since... I don't really have a plotting toolbox in C++ offhand, even though there are, you can download them. I'm just gonna use GNU plot again. So I'm going to uh, do a system call, and I don't need to do, in, in Fortran you have to do this call thing. You don't need to do that in, uh, in C++. You just do system, rm, iter, uh, data, c++.txt, and then we're going to open um, a file. So now we're gonna use the old uh, archaic um, file uh, variable. Um, you can use fstream objects is cool if you want um, 
maybe I'll post a blog blog link to it in the description but I just don't really want to go over it now anyway so we're gonna make file a star out file and then we're gonna say out file equals f open iter data C++ txt and I'm going to write to it so f open is a function called f open so if um, now I, I want to do my like you know error error checking here so I'm gonna say uh, if out file equals null which means it wasn't able to open it I'm gonna say see out um, something wrong with out file can I do a slash n just like that I bet you I can I'm curious eh doesn't matter I'll just do end all again. You can you, you you can figure that out. Oh, and then I want to return zero if it didn't work. Obviously. Uh, let's see. Compile, run. Uh, cannot remove the file because it doesn't exist, but that's fine. Um, it looks like we didn't have a problem opening the file at all. So I wonder if that file exists. Yeah. So the file's there now. Uh, we just didn't put anything in it. Um, all right. So now what? Um, okay. So now we got to do our while loop. So we do uh, while. So while in uh, C plus plus so there's, there's no do while or anything. Uh, while and then you have to do uh, f abs because it's a, a float. If you just do abs, so abs is for ints and f abs is for floats. And obviously, double means double floating point precision. So a float and a double are the same. It's it, it's eight bytes, you know. Which is why in Fortran you can do a real eight because it's eight bytes. Right. Anyway, I don't know if you guys knew that. Okay, so uh, while fabs error um, is greater than 1e minus 5, we're going to do some stuff. Uh, so since everything's local in here, I'm just going to define variables inside the loop because I don't actually need them anywhere else. So I'm going to say C out. Uh, let's see, I need to C out uh, x iters of counter and L. Um, and then I want to, uh, I'm going to do fprintf, uh, out file, and if, to do fprintf, what you need to do, and you know what I'm going to do actually, um, I'm going to do a printf here so you can see the difference. So if I want to print a number to standard out using printf, I actually need to tell it like, hey, I'm, I'm printing a long floating point uh, number, and that's x iters counter. And so you can do the exact same thing um, in fprintf, except the difference is that it, 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 take, it wants it to know what file you're writing to, and so x iters uh, counter, uh, just like that. So then we want to do a double x current equals uh, x iters of counter. Oops, semicolon. Oh yeah, by the way, C++ there's semicolons at the end of every line. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, so that's x current. Um, then we're going to say so uh, here we like call the functions and save the variables. We don't actually need to do that. We can just say x next equals x current minus uh, f of x current divided by f prime of x current. And I don't think we've defined f prime, so let's go up here and make a new function double f prime double x uh, return. What is this? Two times x minus one. And then, let's see, hmm, what do we do now? Uh, so it's x and x, so x iters of counter plus one equals uh, x next. And then uh, this is cool in C++, you can do counter plus plus, uh, which means uh, add one to it. Um, and then I need to call error again, error equals f of x next, like that. And that should work, let's test that out. It compiled, did it work? Ooh. What was my initial guess? 10? Something happened. My initial guess was 10, but then exeter of counter. What's exeter of counter? Did I never set? Ah, I never I never actually set. Exeter, that's really bad. You need a exeter of 0 is x0. Oops. That's dangerous. There we go. Now we're somewhere. Okay, so uh, the last thing is to uh, call GNU plot using. Uh, this function stuff. So uh, in order to do that in uh, in C++, um, we can just do uh, system, and this is what's kind of neat about, um, what's it called? Mm, strings and whatnot. We can do gnu plot dash e, 
and then we want a quotation, so we just do slash quotation, plot, tick mark, iter, data, C++, .txt, um, with lines, line weight, three, pause, minus one, slash quotation, and then end the quotation that we're actually sending. And uh, that should give us a nice new plot. Ooh, blast. Skipping data plot. Oh, did I forget to close the file? Ooh, yeah. Uh, F close out file. If you don't do that, the file is empty. So it's there now, but I mean, that's because the program like freaked out. So let's try this again. Uh, I gotta compile it. There we go, boom, sweet. So now I can do, what, minus five? Let's, did we do something, let's do something crazy. Let's do like, you know, 10,000, oh man. Newton Raphson's just a boss, it just converges immediately. So, so there you have it. There's the uh, code of C++. You got all these uh, pound includes at the top. You've got using namespace standard. You've got some functions here. You've got uh, input arguments here. You got two different ways to print to the output um, using uh, C++ or C standards. Um, here we check our input arguments, uh, pre-allocate our array, set our initial condition, make some variables, remove the data file, open the output file, error checking on the output file, the while loop itself, close the file to make sure that we can actually use GNU plot to read it. And then that's it. Um, Newton Raphson is pretty simple, that's why I chose to do this. So if we grab our uh, roadmap here, we've done Libre, MATLAB, Mathematica, Python, R, Ruby, Perl, Bash, Fortran, C++, and so the only ones that are done are processing and Arduino. And so the only reason I'm doing this is just because I really like processing, and Arduinos are pretty cool too, and they're actually built out of C++. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy the, and paste the code directly from C++ into processing, and we're gonna see if it works. Okay, here we go.